Hello everybody, Shelly here. I am back with my first ever Sydney Grace palette. This is the first time I've ever purchased Sydney Grace products before. So this is the brand new palette collaboration with Mel Thompson, which I absolutely adore. And this is her Tiny Marvels palette. I'm sure you guys have seen all the other makeup artists out there doing videos for this, but in honor of it being my very first Sydney Grace palette. I thought maybe I would try to do three looks of this one palette and see if a lady of a certain age who's not a makeup artist can get a palette like this to perform and to give us three looks that we would leave the house in. It's a cardboard case, but it feels heavier than a lot of other cardboard cases, I think. It does have a mirror in it. It's got 15 shades. It looks like a combination of maybe some mattes and some fun pops of color, some shimmers, metallic-y type things. So we're just gonna play with this. I kinda wanna do like maybe two fun looks and one almost like a date night look. Are you guys down with that? I feel like this palette just screams like stepping out of your comfort zone. As I'm looking at this palette, I'm trying to figure out like which order things make the most sense in. And sometimes when I look at it, I can go, oh, okay, go down a row and things look good or go up a column and things, you know, you can kind of see. And I get a little bit of that, but then I also think that when you do squares like this, that makes sense. That's starting to make sense. I don't know what I would put this in. This is such a great pop of color. I actually saw in her reveal video that she used this bright green. It's not showing up on the camera when I look at it, but it is a bold, 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 bright, bright green. This yellow color is not really my comfort zone, but this li lilac, lavender kind of color is really pretty. I think I'm gonna use this kind of softer sort of coral color in here. It's kind of a peachy color called Flutterby. I did not put any eyelid primer on today. I've heard great things about Sydney Grace formula and like maybe you don't even need it so that's kind of what I'm going with here. Sydney Grace is one of those in indie brands that I hadn't really heard much about, don't really know much about, but I think they have a really strong following and I feel like the people that have tried Sydney Grace like love Sydney Grace products. So this being the first one, kind of wanted to see how I felt about it and I think this palette is like $52 maybe. So for that price point for 15 shades, you know, I mean, it's not the Wayne Goss <laughs> price for for six shades. It's also, some, you know, out of a lot of people's budgets. So you want to be able to make sure that you can get a variety of looks from that same palette. And are they going to work with us? And man, do you have to have a PhD in cosmetology before you can get the products to work? And I used a very large brush to cover more real estate than, than I needed to because... I have three looks and I don't want to take all day doing this. I think I'm going to use Death Moth to kind of deepen up my crease a little bit. Maybe go into a little bit more of a C here. Okay, so that's actually really pigmented. I barely tapped into that and got so much color. So I'm just picking up some of the kick up here since I know it's super pigmented. I'm just taking a clean brush and kind of buffing that out a little bit because it's very pigmented. So those two colors actually blended pretty well together. I wasn't going to do it, but I think I want to go in with this bright green here. I want to just see what that looks like. I wasn't sure how I would feel about this. Of course, it's the one that tends to draw my, my eye the most when I look at this palette. Some of these colors I know that she applied wet to get more saturation. I don't know if you need it. This color is so unique. I can honestly say in all of my huge quantity of palettes, I don't think I have a shade quite like this. All right, you guys, as we're stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit even more, I'm going to go in with this shade right here, which is kind of a shimmery green called Fire Butts, which I think she named after fireflies. And I'm going to pat that right into the center of my lid. Oh, wow, that's a gorgeous color. Okay, I really like those two greens together. There is something about this combination of colors that looks so spring-like to me. Irish spring. I feel like I want to darken up the outer a little bit here. So I'm going to go into Spider, which is the deepest shade in this, and we're just going to give this a little bit more depth. All right, I'm going to take a clean brush and kind of buff these colors in together here. I've got just a little bit of black eyeliner. This feels like one of those eye looks where if you go out in public wearing it, you get a lot of attention. And I don't mean like negative attention, like, oh my gosh, you look like some sort of crazy cartoon character. But I feel like this combination looks like something very artistic. It's kind of fun. I'm going to put on some mascara. I'll be right back. 
mascaras on. I'm going to still take a little bit more of this bright green color Mantis just up against my lash line. And I'm kind of working it in with the shade Spider that I kind of drug down under my eyes just a little bit. I try not to do too many things that are going to close off my eyes and make them look even smaller unless I'm going for something really exotic and impactful. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this. I really like this. I'm going to grab the lightest shade in here called Web, sort of this bright, bright white here in the corner. And we're just going to give a little bit of light right there. I am thrilled by this so far. The formula, the pigmentation, the color story is actually super fun and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. I was half sort of expected that some of these colors might be a little chalky and that work really well for makeup artists, but maybe not so much for me. But I'm pleasantly surprised. Out of the shades that I've used so far, which is four, five, six, seven shades I've used so far in this 15 pan palette, I feel like I've got a pretty good idea of what the colors translate to. There are enough neutrals that you could do a simple clean work look. I think that this pop of color and this pop of color and maybe even this yellow gives you something edgy and fun and vibrant. I'm going to take this off and come back with a second look. I'll be right back. I think I need to do something with this kind of mauve color here called Love Bug. Pretty. I did use some of that Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base to start with. Okay, that color is really pretty. Way to go, Mel. Is this the first eyeshadow collab she's done? And if you guys don't subscribe to Mel Thompson, please do. She's super quirky and fun, and she, this whole artwork here, she had her tattoo artist uh, design, and I think she has probably more than anything else a lot of bugs on her and she just really likes the creepy crawlies. I'm sure there's a story of how she originally got interested in them but I don't know the story. <laughs> She's She and I have never sat down with a glass of wine and compared tattoo stories before so I suspect I would be listening to her for a while because she's very colorful. I think I'm gonna do Bugaboo. Oh, so pretty. I'm really feeling like these colors, especially those plums, this, this color right here. Wow, that is really, really pretty. I'm going to use the light, uh, this purple shade called, I think it's called Jewel Bee. I'm having a hard time reading it, but I think it's called Jewel Bee. Press it onto my lid. I wanted to see how it would apply with fingers. We're getting creative with all the colors today, huh, guys? I'm going to go into Meadowhawk, which seems really unexpected. Wow, that's an interesting formula. So the shimmers are very, very creamy. Oh, wow. I don't know how you decide what your favorite shades are in this palette. Okay, that shimmer with my finger went on pretty well, but I think I want to put a little bit more on with a brush. Oh, wow. I'm going to go in with a little bit of web in the inner corner again. Wow, you guys, these colors are so beautiful. I don't know that my camera is going to really do it justice. Clean up a little bit of the darkness under my eyes, put on some mascara, and I'll be right back. Look number two with the Sydney Grace Mel Thompson palette, Tiny Marvels. I was prepared not to be impressed by this palette. When I saw pictures of this online, I thought, you know what? There might be some chalky colors in here. I don't know that the color story is really my jam. And I'm playing with 11 of the 15 shades in here. I feel so creative right now, it's ridiculous. I, I don't even know how to explain it to you. If you were thinking that you were on the fence about this, like you're not sure if it would work for you or if you could pick it up and pull together a look that you would leave the house in. I would leave the house with this all the time. I think it's unexpected with that little pop of purple in there and that meadow hawk shade on the inside is more of a corally warm color. I can see using so many of these just one two shadows and being out the door and then I see layering it and blending it and just making it beautiful. I am intrigued by this shade right here. This looks to me like one that I've seen similar in a Natasha Denona palette. Um, the Metropolis palette I think has a shade that seems like it's very similar to this. I feel like I'm inspired. I don't know. I'm excited because it's, I think it's been a while since I've been inspired by a palette. So I'm going to go in with Walking Stick, which is kind of like a, almost like a dirty martini 
olive green. And I am tapping this on right now because for eyelid primer, I didn't do the Gerard Cosmetics. I actually used a little bit of an emollient eye cream topped with the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, which seems like a strange combination. That green is beautiful. It has that kind of grungy look to it. Man, you guys, I really feel like the mattes in here, you could really do a matte and then a shimmer and just have really beautiful, easy, just super wearable eye looks. I'm impressed by this, I admit. I knew nothing about Sydney Grace. I think I'd seen a couple people talk about her, but then I had one of my subscribers, Ginny, actually mentioned, asked me if I'd had any your stuff. I love supporting US-based businesses, especially these days. I have to use this shade Scarab, which is interesting because my very first tattoo was a Scarab. Should I tell you guys that story? Might as well, right? This is the... This is the Shelley's oversharing part of, of the segment. I studied ancient Egyptian history in college. And when I read about the background of scarabs, for whatever reason, kind of resonated with me. The idea of the symbolism, meaning the sort of death and rebirth part, and I don't mean like a, in a reincarnation kind of way, but more in the lines of in order to become the next phase, you have to have a death to the previous phase. Stay with me here. It's kind of like when you have to finish the chapter that you're in before you can go to the next one, or you should anyway, or leave the room that you're in before you can walk into the next one. You have to have a closure at moving past, moving forward from where you're currently at before you can be open and receptive and prepared for the next, what comes next. And I think a lot of people, myself included, fear change, or not fear, but there's a trepidation for change. We don't like the unknown. Comfort zone may not be pretty, but it's where we're at. It's what we know. And what we know is there's comfort in that. My thought was I needed to have a tattoo that was like a life lesson. And because I have a hard time letting go, I thought having something that reminded me sometimes you have to have a death of something before the new improved version comes forward. A anyway, so I had a scarab with its wing spread because my thought with its wing spread is you have to be able to kind of trust the wind beneath your wings, that which you cannot see. The, whether it's faith, your belief system, something more spiritual maybe, less scientific. And I'm normally someone who's a little bit more on the scientific, logical, rational, tangible side. So I wanted to remind myself that sometimes you have to trust something that you cannot see. And sometimes you have to have something else, have a complete death closure, be able to move past it before the new butterfly, if you will. Anyway, so the scarab symbolizes that whole death and rebirth process. And I loved it. And I got that tattoo when I was 27 years old and I don't regret it at all. Those colors are so beautiful. I'm a little scared, but I want to use this gold shimmer in here called BB. And I'm going to take it out with my finger, and I don't know how close I can get to. These nails are kind of ridiculous. Whoa. Okay. So Edgar Allan Poe wrote a story called The Gold Bug. Now all of a sudden I'm thinking about Edgar Allan Poe and, Poe and the Gold Bug. All right. I'm going to try to blend these two together just by pressing them a little bit. I was not expecting to like this as much, you guys. I gotta be honest. I don't know what possessed me to put these three colors together, but I love it. All right, I'm using a little bit of tree hopper to just kind of buff out that top edge just a little bit. I don't really need it, but I'm just making it a little softer. I did take Death Moth and drug it across the bottom, and I am loving this. I'm, I'm gonna tight line with some black eyeliner and some mascara, and I'll be right back. My mind is blown right now. I, mm, I don't even know where to start. I suspect Mal Thompson agonized over the colors to put in here. When I first looked at it, I'm like, okay, I see my plums, I see my peaches, I see some greens. And I'm like, okay, there's enough to work with as long as the formula is not chalky, patchy, whatever. I challenged myself by trying color stories that I would have never put together. I'm trying to figure out how you can go wrong with this, you guys. This palette is so much fun. I used every color in here with the exception of, I don't think I used marble. We're gonna throw some marble on here just because 
that's the one I haven't used yet. All right, we're going to put some marble down here. Because who does that, right? I'm shocked, you guys. I'm legitimately, honestly, didn't know what to expect. I thought, you know what, I'm going to spend $52 on a palette of a brand I've never even heard of before. I don't know anything about. And I think the thing that I'm shocked the most about is I don't know which color I like the most. I can't, I can't look at this and tell you that's my favorite color. I can't, I can't, I can't decide. It's like asking which one of my kids is my favorite. I think it depends on the day. Sydney Grace, good job on the formula. Mel Thompson, great job on the color story. My only wish on this, my only, I'm not gonna say it's a complaint, but my only wish on this is I can't easily look at this and come up with the colors that I'm gonna use. I almost have to swatch them to see if those are the ones I'm gonna play with or not, and, and do they look okay? And I was pleasantly surprised with every single color combination I did. I thought there was something unexpected. That's my takeaway from this. This is an unexpected palette. It's, it's an unexpected pleasure. And I'm excited to play around with it some more. Three looks, one palette. Can a lady of a certain age come up with three looks that she'd leave the house in? I think that and then some. I'm thrilled. I did use the BH Cosmetics Weekend Vibes Belgian Waffle palette to do a little bit of contouring. And then I also used the Vanilla Cream Truffle from BH Cosmetics as um, blush today. These are these have been some go-to products for me. And then for lips, I used ColourPop Lippy Pencil in the shade Good and Plenty, which makes sense because it did kind of look like the sort of pink or good and plenty. But anyway, I lined my lips, filled them in, and then I went in with one of the two new lip oils that I got from ColourPop as well. The one I used today is in the shade Skinny Dip, which I don't know why I still have in the package because I don't need it anymore. But it looks like that. Nah, it looks like this. It's very light, but again, it's, an, it's a lippy oil. Just really kind of amped up that lip liner which I'm also going to take out of the package because I don't know why it's still in here. I did get another one of the lippy oils um, when I placed that order. This is from that, I don't want to call it the cactus collection, but it's, you know what I'm talking about? One of the cactuses all over it, desert. The one of the cactuses on it, unwild something. Anyway, I'm liking them. They're super comfortable, especially when you have to put a mask on. My lips feel moisturized and hydrated. That is it, you guys. Sydney Grace, Mel Thompson. If you don't have this palette yet, and again, I'm not affiliated, I'm not endorsed, I get nothing in PR. I'm a lady of a certain age who's not a makeup artist who likes to know, can we get multiple looks at the same palette and does that make a good use of our money? This is a win for me. This is a hit, hit it out of the park. I hope you guys are all doing really well and until my next video, bye for now.